Hello and welcome back to Seconds Out. My name is Eamon Khan. Always a pleasure, never a chore to be joined by the white rhino Dave Allen out in action this weekend. Dave, how is the Allen family? Yeah, very good. Thank you, mate. Yeah, ever growing. Yes, I think no, done now though. I'm done making children. <laughs> done with the whole process of it. Too, too old, can't be asked. Yeah, Blade, happy birthday as well. 30s are a bit crap though, aren't they, Dave? Yeah, 32 now, yeah. You don't think you're ever going to be 32. I can't believe it. I um, I look well for 32. I'm not worried what anyone says. I look good. But, yeah, it's uh, scary, really. I think when you're younger, you forget when you're getting older, everyone else is as well. It's, uh, that's the worst bit. But, uh, but yeah, I'm grateful to, to still be here, really, yeah. Okay, exactly what you mean. Um, are you, or at least maybe the oldest of your two, Possibly coming to this fight this weekend? No, no, I, I don't want my kids to box. Um, I don't want them to have any involvement. I would like them to play tennis. Um, yeah, tennis would be good. Anything, golf, mm. anything, zero contact. I don't even want them to play football or nothing. You know, go, go, go do something else. Boxing has been tough and, um, through the last four generations, we've done it, the Allen family. But I hope that ends with me. You know, it's not it's not something I would want my kids to go into. Speaking of thirty and thirties, thirty is a bit of a landmark for you this weekend. Your thirtieth fight, thirtieth fight week. Um, yeah. How do you feel about where you are in the sport right now? Yeah, I'm proud, John. We did have thirty pro fights, so I'm finally joining in. You know, when I was a kid, uh, my dad was locally and whatever else everyone knew him you know so I always wanted to be I always wanted to to reach that landmark when I started boxing I finally am my great granddad actually had 31 fights so mm -hmm. when I get this one have another one then another one and then I'm the most I'm, I'm the best Alan there's ever been in this uh, family in this family tree my my lineage I'm the number one man so uh, so yeah I'm proud to have had 30 pro fights you know it's been a Nearly twelve years pro boxing. It's been uh, it's been up and down. Um, you know, I've had ups and downs. I've, I've sometimes let myself down, but but uh, but overall, I'm happy with what I've achieved, and um, and we're still going. Yes, yeah, somehow I'm not sure how, but we're still going. Speaking of you know, not letting yourself down, not letting yourself. You know, go in that sort of sense as well it seems like from your social medias you're looking in incredible shape and i wondered maybe you were able to kind of get into this shape because maybe there isn't that much pressure than there was on other fights that there were in your career but i mean fights nonetheless anyway they aren't one on shape but they are on fitness sometimes too and yeah. you're looking very very good well basically i was 21 stone four at the turn of the year um and then I had Steve Levy boxing for the European uh, silver title, and I had Joe Aiden on the card as well. So up until their fight, uh, just focusing on them, and and then I got a date April six, and uh, just got in the gym really, and I started a diet. I started diet every Monday, um, but uh, I stuck to it. Today's day thirty eight. I don't know how I stuck to it. I don't know why. The reason why is I've not actually wanted to eat anything. I'm not even bothered. I'm not. I've not got the most willpower in the world. Uh, I've always failed every diet I've ever done. I failed pretty much everything I've ever tried in life. That is the truth. Um, but this time I've done it. Yeah, I'm not the fittest I've ever been, and I'm not the lightest I've ever been. I still weigh 19 stone three. Um, when I watched Lucas Brown, I was 17 six. But what I can tell you is the last 38 days has been has been the best I could have possibly been. Um, so still a long way off, but. Um, I think I think I'm going to keep it going. Yeah, there's not really any pressure on me anymore. Mm. You know, if I fight Saturday and then don't box again, I'm over the moon with what I've done. You know, I can go on to do other things. So uh, I guess I'll just play a part in it. Yeah, but uh, yeah, we'll see. I'm taking it one fight at a time, really. I sat down with my partner and I just said to her, I'll take it one at a time. If I box Saturday, I don't feel good or I don't enjoy it, that'll be me done. So um, yeah, I'm not enjoying it right now. Glad you're enjoying it. But I just wondered, and you've half answered my question, but I've got to ask it anyway. This fight, whilst, you know, doesn't have kind of that 
big fight feel that you've had in the past beforehand. I wonder if this is set up for something. Um, people want to see you back in those big time fights. They want to see you back doing well. Um, is that on your mind at all outside of, you know, the want to take things one step at a time? I, I get that. But um, is there the goal this year to have something big? Not really, no. Um, when, I boxed, when I boxed Fraser Clark, um really upset me how I performed. Mm. Um, so from July 2019, I boxed Dorian Darts, so that lasted two rounds. I then beat an Italian fellow in a round and a half. I then went, uh, beat a fellow in a round and a half in Newcastle. Then I beat a fellow in a minute in Malta. Um, and the fellow in Malta, I just clubbed him. Just, it was awful. Then the fellow in Newcastle, I tried to carry him for a few rounds to get some rounds, which was completely pointless because he was a cruiserweight and he was useless. And the Italian fella, again, tried giving him, carrying him for a few rounds. Again, completely useless. So, pretty much, um, you know, it'd been, I'd had, what, like, maybe five rounds in, in four years by the time I bought Clark. And uh, and it showed, really. Um, that fight really upset me and bothered me more than any other defeat I'd had. Uh, because not only did I get beat, but it was a really, really bad performance. Um, and it was a fight I felt I, I really could have won. Uh, I felt like my last chance. I really thought I would do it. And then within 30 seconds of the fight, I just thought, wow. You know, my dad had warned me before, you need to do an eight round, you need to box someone half decent, you need to do this. And I thought, no, I can beat him anyway. And, um, I was awful and I'll never put myself in that position again. Um, I don't want to get beat. I don't want to get beat on Skybox office for everybody, to be honest. So, um, I win this fight Saturday. I won't go straight into a big fight because I won't win it. I know that now. Yeah. You know, I've learned from my mistakes. I've, learned, I've made a lot of mistakes over the years and when I'm 32, I look back and I think, wow, wow. You know, but, um, so no, there won't be a big fight next. There might not be a big fight ever again. But um, the only way there will be is if is if I crossed all the eyes and no, crossed all the T's and dotted all the eyes. Sorry. So um, so yeah, I don't need boxing anymore. To be honest, boxing. I'm I uh, I'm using boxing to keep fit, and uh, you know I've got a young stable of boxers that are coming through, and um, really enjoying it. But at the same time. If I can't compete at a certain level, you won't see me at it because I've got more pride than that. And the Fraser Clark fight really, really bothered me because I was well aware how bad it was when I was in there and I couldn't do a blind thing about it. So uh, I won't be doing that again. Just, um, you don't have to answer this question if you don't want to, but is this your last fight with Dennis? Uh, my contract uh, is, is up this year at some point. Um so I'll fight next week and I'll see Dennis. Dennis has been a friend of mine. I started off with Dennis many years ago. So um fight Saturday and then it's just a case of, you know, I'll speak to him and we'll go from there. Um text him another week. My my plans are up in the air really, one at a time. So I'll box this Saturday and uh just just go from there really. Yeah. My um yeah, my commercial contract or whatever else is up this year but um, it's not really, not really anything I give any thought to really because it's not up yet so um, I'll see him and see what and see what he has to say when I see him Spoke to Alan Babich after his victory over Steve Robinson on Sunday and I said who does he want who does he want for a big fight next and he said in his own way I won't, I won't mimic him but he said Dave Dave O Dave Allen let's do something <laughs> big let's do something in the UK and you're no stranger to be called out by Babich beforehand but he seems keen on on that one you're saying right now it's one step one fight at a time but um, that may be something in the future for you yeah I would want to box me now too to be honest <laughs> you know um, like I said I'm, I watched Price then I watched Darch when I watched Darch I was still in the gym I was still in the gym I was still doing bits of sparring I was still fit Uh and then I've trained for Lovejoy, and then when that fell through, I've hardly hardly done a thing for years. And I've, then I got fit for Clark, but there's getting fit, and there's being and there's being ready to watch an Olympic medalist, you know. And uh, 
and I wasn't. But I, I did get fit. I did put a shift in. I did train, but I wasn't ready. Um, and again, since the Clark fight, I sparred twice last week, and that's it. That's enough for this fight. I don't want to be sparring too much at my age now. I've got a few miles on the clock, so when I need to spar, I'll do it. I'll do it when I need to. Not not right now, but I'm not battling Babbage now because I wouldn't beat him. Mm. He knows that as well, which is why he's calling me out. You don't call people out to get beat, dear. So I'm not an idiot. And in the past, financially, I've needed to take certain fights, but at the moment, I don't. So if I do box the Babbage or I do or I do get any big fight, I'll be very confident I'm going to win it. Uh, as I get older now, I'm listening more to people that know a little bit more than me. And, um, and we'll see. But I've not made any plans, really. Most people won't even care, to be honest, at this point. But, um, but yeah, we'll see. Dave, just get your thoughts on a couple of things before I let you go. Um, first of all, I want to start with your stable. Uh, boxing, you say you don't need boxing, but boxing needs you right now in the form of your young fighters who are looking to uh, push on with their fledgling careers. How is your stable getting on and um, when are they out in action? Yeah, Joe Aiden's 12-0 and 0 now. Um, it was first, he had an amateur fight before I met him and got beat. And then we've had uh, 16 fights together. He's won them all. We're sparring Catch in Tenerife. We're sparring Lewis Ritson tomorrow. Mm. You know, he's Ritson sparring partner for Donovan. And he's also Catch sparring partner for Taylor. Um, so he's boxing a week on Saturday. He is, he's, he's a real dark horse, you know. People, a lot of people probably won't know anything about him, but he's good. And I wouldn't say that. I don't say that about all my boxers either. He's a, he's a real deal. So, um, so yeah, he's boxing next week. Uh, very, very excited about him, to be honest. Yeah, just, yeah. Uh, Stevie Levy, obviously European silver champion. She's had an injury. She was due to box in a massive fight uh, next month, but out through injury. And we'll see what happens with her. You know, she climbed Everest already. So at this point now, in a good position to have some good fights and we'll see Calvin Moyo has to have his debut in a couple of weeks that's been pushed back I've got a young kid amateur boxer he's, he's had one and won it I've got another kid that was meant to turn pro he's not turning pro now it's all going off the patio is just a mad place yeah but <laughs> I love every minute of it to be honest I really do yeah so um, the train not the managing I don't love the managing I'm not a money guy I'm not very good with it but the training I have a real passion for it and uh, we're doing pretty well. So it's good. Yeah, I'm enjoying it. And the patio patter continues as well too as a podcast host, right? Yeah, not for a while. I'm, I'm like, I, like, like I said earlier, I struggle to stick to anything. <laughs> you know, it started off strong as always. I start off strong in everything in life and it fizzles out pretty quickly. So, uh, and you can have patio patterns to the list. So like, yeah, hopefully it'll come back at some point. But all loading videos to YouTube is hard, you know. It's difficult. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I ain't got much patience. It's the tedium. It's, like, boring as well. Like, you've got to do all the clicking and all that sort of stuff that gets, get, gets you put off by it. But moving on to some heavyweight fights that I want to get your thoughts on. I've, I've seen you on other channels discuss... Um, Wardley versus Clark at length so I don't want to go over too much ground but I was I, I always kind of when it comes to big fights I check out your predictions uh, because I think sometimes or quite often to be fair you've got your finger on the pulse with things and you were kind of predicting that the fight wouldn't go seven and someone said that you know you, you even went mm -hmm. further and said you didn't think it would go even three to be fair you'd be surprised if it went that, yeah. past that point um, so so what kind of are your takeaways from the fight from Wardley and Clark and where do you think both can go? Yeah, I was miles off with it. Um, but it was a brilliant fight. It was brilliant. Um, I thought it was a great fight. I thought they both showed, um, you know, stuff that I didn't, that we've not seen from them before. Mm. My prediction of the fight was based on my fight with Clark, whether I underestimated myself or whether Wardley's not as good as I thought he was. Uh, I'm not so sure. I knew Clark was tough. I just didn't think he could go the rounds. I thought he was too heavy. And I didn't think he'd do the rounds. Um, but um, it was a good fight. I've been intrigued to watch him box like someone else, though, if that makes any sense. Like, they made it that it was a good fight. They are very, very good fighters. I boxed one of them. I know how good they are. But I'm not sure. Like, we'll see when they go to the next level. 
Let's say him with someone else. I'm intrigued. Wardley, I don't think Wardley can improve much, really. He is what he is, and he's a hard man to beat with what he is, but I'm not sure how much he can improve. You know, he's a big, strong man. He punches, he's tough. He's very hard to beat, but uh, I've not seen much improvement in him. And Fraser Clark, uh, brilliant boxer. You know, he's, he's shown a lot of things I didn't know he was capable of, but has he got the power uh, to go to the next level himself? I'm not so sure. And again, this is this is me talking as a boxing fan, not as a not as a fellow heavyweight. Uh, this is just my opinion on what I see. Um, but well, the fight itself was amazing, yeah. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of credit must go to both. And probably one of the best heavyweight fights I've seen for a long time. Joe Parker has put out a call out in his own funny, unique way to Dylan White. And you were actually, you were on the undercard for that first fight, weren't you? Mm -hmm. um, and you've also fought Dylan White as well, too. Um, just now where the two are in their careers with Joe Parker seeming on a real good resurgence right now and Dylan White trying to come back and having just the fight against Christian Hammer... Uh, I, I imagine maybe you'd lean towards Joe Parker if the two were to meet in a rematch. Yeah, currently that's Joe Parker. He's on a great run. Him and Anthony Joshua are by far the two informed heavyweights at the minute. You know, they're very active and, and picking up some solid wins, especially Parker. You know, the Zhang wins massive. So um, I think it's a good fight if it's made, yeah. You know, Dylan White's just come back. Well, there's loads of good fights for him. But, you know, with, with Parker's activity and, and White being out, Parker has to be a massive favourite in that fight if it happens. Who would you favour in a fight between Wilder versus Zhang? Because Wilder's not looking the form that he used to be in and Zhang seems to fade in after the halfway point or maybe even earlier for some people's eyes. So if the, those two were to sign on a deal and get into the ring, where would you put your last dollar on? I would go for Zhang. I think Zhang's just better. Like, he's just a lot better. Better boxer. Uh, better puncher I would say as well uh, I think Zhang would stop him early uh, Wilder from a few years ago maybe a different story but uh, the Wilder that bought Zhang against uh, Wilder that bought Parker against Zhang that bought Parker I think there's only one winner in that Zhang um, I think Zhang's really good mm. really dangerous he can box he's huge you know he's tough you know he does seem to he does seem to be let down a little bit by you know a lack of what, what it, whatever it may be stamina fitness but uh, he's very good you know I would avoid him at all costs if I was a if I was a heavyweight at the top level I'm not interested in that right hook at all and then you were super impressed as a lot of people were with Daniel Dubois and beating Jarrell Miller showed a mm. lot of heart in that fight he's now mooted to be taken on Philip Hergovich which seems another uh, good step up for Daniel but could it be one too soon for him? Uh, I think the, I, I like the boy to be honest. I think it's funny that whole daddy thing. I thought that was brilliant. You know, he's uh, he's funny in it. Um, Hergovic has not been impressive for like five years now. Hergovic was the next big thing, and he's just been poor lately. Uh, Mark Demori, I'd beat Mark Demori. Mm -hmm. You know, watching Mark Demori just like disappointing. He was poor against McKean. Um, he was poor against Zhang. I fancy Dubois to beat him on, on again on recent form. You go, I'd go for Dubois. Um, Hergovic, whether it's a case he's not training properly or whether he's just not as good as we thought, I'm not sure. But I want Dubois to win, and I and I and I, I probably would favour him at the moment.